evening, Lake Orion. Well, beautiful day out. I'm your host, and I am. Between, Between Terminus. <laughs> okay, that's enough. Are they going to cut in the uh, I song? don't know how it's going to work, but cut we'll see how song. it goes. All right. Oh, now you're the host because you're in the captain chair. Yeah, huh? I'm the captain chair. Sure. And your thoughts? Well, um, Sammy's the captain of the ship, so I guess. Okay, he's- oh, welcome, he welcome okay. to Between Terraminas here on Orient Television. Of course, we are using the last three brain cells set here. On TV podcast. The On TV podcast here, of course. Um, I'm Sammy Terramina here. There's Anthony Terramina, and then there's Ian Albert Weatherspoon, who is our tour level champion. Love that you give my last name and my golf stat or my middle name and my golf status to everybody. You yeah. also forget I am the host of History Now and also host of Lake Orion Football Preview Show. And Ooh. I am the host of Away Now. So Ooh. a couple weeks from now, Ian, you and I get to preview the NFL football season. Coming up. We're, We're going to see be. how training camp goes for all 32 and uh, yep. give you the full preview. Full Let's breakdown. talk about the Lions to start off. You want to start Lions? Lions? Let's start Lions, yeah. Right. Because you were, we're on the subject, so let's talk about Lions. All right. All what's, right. What's our talking point? So to kick us off. The li- the preseason camp started. Yeah. Training uh, camp. Training camp started. Um, lots of expectations for the Lions this year. Uh, give your thoughts. Ian, uh, you want to start or Sam? Oh. Oh, give, give me. I want to hear this. Lots of expectations. Good. There should be. Um, that's it. That's all I got. It's training camp, and I'm knocking on wood that everyone's getting out healthy and that we have a clear picture of our 53-man roster. We are going to lose players that we like because they have 90 in camp, and we've improved this roster. So when that happens, you have to cut people you don't want to. So that's going to be unfortunate, but let's hope we're not we have to make those decisions because everyone's healthy and everyone is, you know, uh, feeling. So really you think the Lions are going to cut Jared Goff and Aiden Hutchinson? Not no. <laughs> sure. sure. Not quite here, glad mine. Here is what I'm saying to you guys right now, and I'm going to be honest with you. Okay? For once. The line, I like the Teddy Bridgewater signing yeah. because he's a backup quarterback, backing up Jared Goff. He gives you stability. Experience. Experience. I like where this team's at. They're probably going to be one of the favorites in the NFC North. They prob- they're the, the favorite, favorite in the, the NFC North. North. Um, but Minnesota, I still think, is going to be the team to beat. In that div- I mean, they're still going to be a team to beat. You know, obviously, last year what they did. <laughs> Green Bay, you don't know what, Jer- what Jordan Love is the quarterback. Chicago... They got a lot to work with, obviously, with Justin Fields. Um, but there's optimism. There is hope with the Lions. There is. There is a ton of hope. The fact that their first game of the NFL season against the Kansas City Chiefs, primetime one standard, matchup. One of the standard bearers of the NFL. The. The. Say at this point, standard bearer. It wouldn't surprise me if that game – is a shootout written all over it because could be. it could be. I mean, you remember when Jared Goff was the Rams and Monday that Monday Night Football, Monday Night Coliseum. Football, Coliseum, shootout, sixty three. Yeah, that was a heck of a game. That had shootout written all over it. Um, and Jared Goff won that game. Yeah, the Rams won that game. And in the system, Jared Goff doesn't need to be a um. He doesn't need to be a um, a um, game man. I mean, like, I'll give me his game manager. He doesn't need to be Pat Mahomes. He no, he doesn't need Pat Mahomes. He just needs to be Jared Goff. Keep I would simple. argue, <laughs> keep it simple, Stephen. The Kiss method. Yes, keep it simple. I, I know your love for Kiss. <laughs> no, no. Sure. No, I no, would no. argue the Lions have more firepower on offense than the Chiefs. Now, okay, that may sound crazy. No the wide Tyree receivers, Hill. question mark, yeah. Who are, their, who are their receivers? Who are their running backs? They have Travis Kelsey and Pat Mahomes. That has been enough to win a Super Bowl. Yeah. Because they have, they, I mean, that is pretty outstanding connection. Sure. Uh, but I, I think the Lions can go toe-to-toe. They got to block out a lot of noise and distraction when they're at Arrowhead. 
but I I like the Lions going in there and the fact that the Chiefs will be celebrating a Super Bowl win. Uh, I can see the Lions really wanting to play spoiler of that evening. And they have a great chance. Remember, ask Green Bay that question. Ask last Green year. Bay Sunday night in January mm-hmm. with a playoff trip on the line. The Lions, unfortunately, didn't get in the playoffs because of Seattle. But they spoiled. But they spoiled Green Bay season. And they took Aaron Rodgers out of Green Bay. And he followed his dad's footsteps to New York to play for the Jets. Could you just imagine, guys? Brett Favre. Could you just imagine this? Lions, Jets, Super Bowl? No, I could not imagine. (laughs) That would be horrible. But I would love to see Kirby Joseph pick off Aaron Rodgers again a couple more times. Yeah, I know he'd be a big fan of that. He'd be a huge fan of that. Kirby Joseph starting to become a star in this in this league. There are a lot of players, second, mm-hmm. third year players that can become stars. Ain Hutchinson could be one. Their draft class this year, even. Yeah, I mean, when you look at it, and there's more time has gone on, they really they got a haul, man. Mm-hmm. Brian Branch, the fourth pick. Holy Toledo! It's good. It's good. The Lions have got something good going on. They do. Isn't sure that strange to say out loud? Blame their coach for it. I would blame their coach for it. Dan he's Campbell's a done a great co- great job of this. Um, yes, he was I mean, who they needed. He's honest. He's right. tough. I mean. You know who I compare it to? Who? Remember for how? Remember forever the Michigan State Spartans football team was a joke? Yeah. Maybe not Nick Saban time. They were okay. Mark but D'Antonio, compare him to? They Ooh, needed coach their D. D'Antonio. State needed a guy that was going to accept their past, but not run from it, but not be afraid of it. And D'Antonio did that. Dan Campbell's doing that. Look what happened with Michigan State after they did that. They were very, very successful for That's what for I'm a saying. long while. They yes. Were. That's what I'm saying. That's they have that a quarterback guy there. They, need. they have Ben Johnson's there still as their oath off as the coordinator. They have everything in place. They have everything in place. They have everything in place, and if they don't win the division, it's a disappointment. If they don't win twelve games, it's a disappointment. Uh, if they win eleven, well, if they win eleven, stretch. you know what I mean? They'll be all. I think if they win like eleven games, you know, maybe. <laughs> I'll accept eleven. Eleven, you should accept because you know they're going to get screwed in Minnesota. No, they will not. <laughs> Why? Because they. There's gonna be a game where the Lions. There's gonna be a game where the Lions and the refs. You know, you know, the referees still hate the Lions. I don't accept. (laughs) The referees still hate the Lions. Still hate the Lions. And you know what? I'm aware. (laughs) You better be aware. (laughs) But they don't need to leave the game to the ref. That's an old excuse. That's an old Lions excuse when they didn't have the players to. To overcome. Not exactly. They still got to overcome the refs. They, they have, still got to overcome the NFL gods who don't want them to win. <laughs> hey, you know I that. would argue the NFL ba- is at their back right now. They sure. placed them on night number one sure. against the Chiefs. Sure. <laughs> they are looked at more favorably than they used to be. Come on sure. now. Sure. Sure thing. When have the when would the Lions ever have opened the season off? Never. That's the NFL showcase game. We haven't seen football for like six or seven months. Well, that's because they looked at the Lions going into Green Bay and beating Aaron Rodgers and the refs and the pack. And they the looked at everything. They looked at everything. And this is not your granddaddy's Lions. This Any is your great grandpa's Lions where they're good. Well, here's my final thoughts on the Lions. We got last three brain cells to talk about this. Nice little promo for a nice side project podcast. Yes, it is. We'll go, we'll dive deep. We should dive deep into it. You two will. I'll be I'll be relaxing on my summer home in Caseville. Oh, uh-huh. okay. All right. Okay. All right. Okay. We'll be right back with between Terminas on ON TV. Okay. Come down to the Lake Orion Farmers Market on August thirty first. All right, that's enough. In downtown Lake Orion. Okay, we're you at can about buy nine. Flour, okay, we're at about nine pumpkins, minutes, guys. Okay, that first corn dog. Take a ride on the carrot. Are you done with this? Are you done? Enjoy a He's not done. meet and greet with the township supervisor, Chris Barnett. He'll shake your hand. He'll give you a hug. He'll sign your autograph. He'll kiss your baby. That's August 31st in downtown Lake Orion for the <laughs> annual Farmer's Market. You would look like a great promo. God. Oh, my goodness. Thank you. Gracious. All right, let's talk about our second segment here. Let's talk about college football experience. 
That was a very inter. We, are we, we expansion have or the death of the, the Pac-12 Pac conference. Shall we call it realignment? Yes, the cal yes realignment in the, terms of the topsy turvy TV owns college football. It's pretty world clear. That we live in. Yes, money talks, money rules, Isn't and that that's crazy? what's yeah, going yeah. on. And unfortunately, ESPN and CBS. In ESPN, Fox, Fox, and CBS. Too, yeah, Fox. The only and way NBC. I'm blaming ESPN is for they're about to go bankrupt, man. They're not going to survive. They might not. They're not going to be a cable channel for much longer. Maybe not. I mean, now, we'll news see. is they're going to open a sports book, but that's not going to last. But we'll see. Well, I'm telling you, it's I think. crazy the Pac-10. Pac-12. Pac-12. The Pac-12, whatever it used to be, eight, survived Pac over 100 years. Yeah, mm -hmm. and then we get into this modern day greed. They couldn't accept playing on Apple TV for twenty five mil a pop, so they bailed and they're going to the Big Ten. Four the of the Big schools. Eighteen. Now it should be the five. Big Eighteen. I you yeah. knew about USC and UCLA. You know yeah, what I mean? You knew about well, that. you knew about them. And but you knew the the other two big dogs were going to have to follow. Yeah, Oregon and Washington are. I was surprised that. I, do you think the Big Ten should look at maybe Oregon State and Washington State? To get up to 20? Maybe. And have two divisions, an east and a west? That are yeah, that would work. Would work. Well, in the more logical sense for Oregon State and Washington State is going to the Mountain West. And um, Well, you also got Cal and Stanford. You know what I mean? You think you guys think about it. You got Cal and Stanford. The ACC, I think, could be an interesting spot for Stanford and Cal. That could be interesting. I think the conference doesn't matter. At this, at point. this point, they don't. It doesn't. They because need stability. You, you look at the ESPN conference, the Fox conference, the NBC conference, the Apple TV conference. You look at all these. You look at all. I mean, what we're what we're truly seeing is the we're, we're truly seeing the death of rivalries in college football, and it's a dang shame because you know Oregon, Oregon State, Washington, Washington State. Those will still play. Those will. You sure? You sure? Are you 90 sure? 90% sure. But I don't know. You know, there's a birth of a new rivalry here. The return of a BYU and Utah are both in the Big 12. I mean, going to be in the Big 12. I mean, Utah coming to the Big 12, you know, BYU is already in that conference. You know what I mean? So that's a rebirth of a new rivalry. But, there. I mean, we you were got talking a &M about. and Texas in the SEC. We were talking about, it wasn't that long ago, we were talking about the Big 12 dissolving. Mm -hmm. We were talking about, but now we're looking at the Pac-12 most likely ceasing to exist. And at the same time, conferences like the SEC and the Big Ten are are getting stronger, you know. And my concern is, I mean, from a college basketball standpoint and coming from a mid-major school, my concern is the mid-major schools schedule these power, these power schools to play, and a lot of them use the money to fund for their athletic departments. They won't get that opportunity now. That is a very big concern that I have, and I'm curious to see are they going to address that? I think that will still happen because these big schools will still need, and no disrespect, but they'll still need cupcake games or easier opponents from lesser schools, lesser, lesser athletically conference. inclined schools, if you will. Uh, they'll still need that. What I'm looking at here and what you're kind of touching on is, in my opinion, college football needs to separate athletically even from basketball. They, they need to disassociate in because it's on another level. College basketball, in terms of TV revenue, is only really relevant some of February and then March, when they own March. But, like, it makes zero sense for the, the entire school, let's say, of Michigan State to follow the football team to go play USC and stuff. Well, you know that's what I mean? exactly what's going to happen. That that can't happen. There has to be a one. That's it, exactly what's going to happen. College football at this point, unfortunately, I'm not saying it's the best thing, but where they're at is they need to become NFL junior, where there's a commissioner, one guy, not conference heads, where there's one guy of college football, and they're just, they're paid by the school, the athletes are, or something to, to play for the school. I don't even think they need to go to school because they're separating themselves. They still need to go to level. school and get an education. But they Let's are, see. with NIL and this realignment and all the money involved, they're not even students anyways, really. I mean, they're that's not their focus. Their focus is on football. 
that's not the that should not that I mean all due respect that but, should never be the intention of you know that's the intention should, I know but that should but the intention you know student athlete that's you know, how it should be it's how it should be yes but the for folk, football it's the problem now. is it comes down to money it, it's got way too much money in it. and then you have the whole college football playoff and then which you is the expanding whole, as which well is expanding mm-hmm. as well I mean it's just it's a mess. It is an absolute mess, and it's all football's fault. And I'm, but it gets me really, really concerned about okay, how is it gonna, how is it gonna work with college basketball and college baseball and, I think those uh, need to be separate. college soccer. I mean, you know, those are those are legitimate concerns because now you have seen, you're you're gonna see the Pac-12 basically dissolve in front of our eyes, and the reality is. There's no more of the ge- geographic, geographical, you know, rivalries that a lot of fans look forward to seeing. Not instead of going to games, you're going to be watching them on TV, and it's going to make the TV, the TV executives make them a lot of money. You know? I'm going to no. disagree with you there, because yours, there's, you look at what the SEC, you look at with Texas, Texas go into that conference and reform that rivalry with A&M. You look at, of course, the new Big 12. Utah going in there with BYU. You know that is a nasty rivalry there. And then you look at, of course, the Arizona. Arizona State is going to still have their rivalries there. But What about Oregon and Oregon State? What about Washington and Washington State? They could play they better not take my early Cup. in the year. Why? They could. They I like could. the Apple Cup. I like, it. I like the Apple Cup, too. I mean, like, you know, but I was really surprised with the Big 10. What they did was... If they go after Oregon State and Washington State, then that takes care of two problems. You know, it takes care of two big problems. Yeah, but I don't know if the Big Ten wants them, though. The thing is, is that I don't think the Big Ten wants them, you know? I think they'd rather have, like, Cal and uh, Yeah, Cal and Stanford. Stanford. Yeah, Cal you know, and Stanford, the, big, yeah. the goal for the Big Ten is Notre Dame. They want Notre Dame. The ACC's got Notre Dame in a few, for a few. Every league except except for football. football. So I mean, the, but the big prize for the Big Ten is Notre Dame. But the Big Ten wants Notre Dame to join for all sports, not just football. Wouldn't it be weird if Notre Dame turned out to be? I don't want to say the smart ones here, but the ones because there's still a lot of dust that needs to be settled there. And you know, it might be a few years of not playing your your geographical rival. Uh, but I think when it becomes, you know. 48, 50, 64 teams or whatever that are in this super conference or super league, uh, yeah, Notre Dame's going to have to be in there. They cannot, they cannot remain on the outside. But right now, it's not a problem for them. Because, of because they have their own TV Yeah, deal. it's NBC. NBC. All right. That's All right. Any final that thoughts? Almost, that's almost 10 minutes, isn't it? Yeah. Minutes. We're, yeah. Where are we at? About 18 right now. Oh, okay. So. Final thoughts here with this is we got to wait and see what happens because part of the re-expansion starting this year with the Big 12, you look at, of course, UCF, Cincinnati, um, Houston, they're all in the Big 12 this year, you know? So it's crazy. It's It's nuts. And Luke Fickle's not in Cincinnati anymore. He's at Wisconsin. Definitely a lot more to talk about on this subject. I think that this subject's not over, and I think that this could, you know, you know, and, and I love talking realignment, especially in the high schools. You guys know that. Um, but, I mean, college football is just unique. You college know? football and high school football are unique. College and football, high school baby. are unique. Football in this country is king. Yes, you know what? Is. You want a final thought? Here's my final thought. I would love one day when this is all settled before again because they're losing money because these TV deals are way too ridiculous. Anyways, I would love it if they applied a European model to this somehow where teams get relegated and teams can come up. Like if you are, let's say Oregon, and you have a bad year, well, Oregon State's been on the outside looking in, and they want in, and they had a great year, and they went undefeated. I would love to see them kind of swap places. So then Oregon has to go down, bump down a division. They go have to play the smaller schools. It's sort of like what he did kind in high like school football. 
Kind of like high school football. It's, it's like a, you're going to high Especially school when you I look at OA, the MAC, those types. I would love mm-hmm. to see it. Yeah. All right, we'll be right back with Tween Tiramina on One TV. Did I ever tell you about the mystery of the Dragon of the Lake? Well, come check out our Dragon of the Lake celebration at the end of August. Taking over downtown Lake Orion. We'll have canoe rides where racing dragons will compete for the ultimate prize, Master Dragon of the Lake. We'll have campfires with s'mores telling about the tales of all the sightings from around the Lake of Orion from 1864 through the stock market crash of 1929. We'll have a beer tent, food trucks, (sighs) food rallies, games for kids. Don't miss it. Third weekend of August, come on down to downtown Lake Orion for our annual Dragon on the Lake celebration. Brought to you by the Lake Orion Chamber of Commerce and the Downtown District Authority. Oh my gosh. You would look you like... Would, I, think, I, think, I think ON TV needs to get rid of their commercials and just make you the spokesperson. And we're back! They didn't make yeah, you your spokesperson. Yeah, they didn't make you TV. Your spo- they, they, ON TV na- needs to make you their... Commercial spokesperson, the way that you've been. I'm available for hire. Of course. Of course you are. Um, I'm like the Big Ten, baby. Just show me the money. Of course. I'll bring in Rutgers. I don't care. Okay. We got Women's World Cup to talk about. All right. Hey, guys. You have a good night. I'll I'll, I'll see you later. Hold up. You're sitting down. Thank you. All right. So let's talk about the U.S. women's team. Uh, They got a (laughs) little. Oh, what? Excuse me. They got eliminated in the round of 16. Um, did not did High not scoring look affair. very impressed. Did not look very impressive. Um, as far as like the the goal scoring, they didn't score a lot of goals. They only scored four goals. That was okay. all against Vietnam. Three against Vietnam. One oh. was against the Dutch. Oh. And then when they got in that zero zero tie against um, Sweden, Portugal, Portugal. Oh, Portugal. I mean, that's when. The alert concerns have really started. Well, had that had that had the shot not gone or the cross didn't or hit the post, they were a goal post away from going home. And the they didn't even make the they wouldn't have made the um, round of sixteen. It's kind of funny when you look at the group stage. Germany's out. You look at Brazil's out. Italy's out. Um, a lot of the superpowers, you know, in soccer, in women's soccer, in women's soccer. What's the shocking. reason the U.S. is out? One the reason, reason why the U.S. is no, there's out, many, but. there's many, but their inability to score goals, especially in clutch situations. I mean, when they played Sweden, I got to give Sweden's goaltender a lot of credit. And Sweden's she, also the third-ranked team in the world. Too. Yeah, but she played incredible. She played lights out. I've got to give Sweden a ton of credit. I mean, they withhold the U.S. rally. They with they weathered the storm, got at the penalties, and you know give credit where credit's due. I mean, Sweden's a team that you know very opportunistic, mm-hmm. but they're also a very good team. And let's not forget, this team beat the U.S. in the 2016 Olympics, so they do have experience on their side. The U.S. was a very young team this year. You look at, of course, there's three players on that team that are, you know, I know including Dennis Rodman's um, daughter is on that team. Mm. And, but when you look at the U.S., um, starts, ends with the coach, the system he put in, the players he chose to be on this team. To be honest with you, he needs to go. He needs to get fired. Who was he? Was he the well, same guy as the past two I think, well, the coach's scheme did not fit the players. You know, the the coach's scheme did not work with the with the players. I mean, open up, open it up, you know. That was one of the big things was open it up. And um, I, I just don't think that his schemes really clicked with this group. Also, this group lacked the killer instinct that they had in the past when they won the World Cup the the last two times and um i mean it was it was very noticeable they were just it felt like that they were they were lucky to be there you know they were happy to be there and and 
I mean, I mean, it was one of those situations where it's like, you know, it was one of those situations where it's like, you know, um, I mean, yeah, it's, you're happy to be there, but at the same time, you want to win it all, you know, and you know that, you know, that you could have done your best and it's just one of those situations. Um, but also, um, the world's caught up to the U S yep. The world, I mean, you there's a lot more parity in women's soccer. But also, you got to look at the youth levels. The youth levels in the women's soccer have to improve. And um, one of the big things is is that you can blame the pandemic all you want. You can blame other things all you want. But I mean, the the it starts at the youth levels, and you got to fix it at the youth levels. And um, when and you know, because the youth levels are what's going to build the team going forward. I mean, you got some good pieces there, but at the same time, you got to hold, build the whole youth level, and then to develop those players. So when they're ready for that for the stage, you know, you can't keep relying on. Yes, they were a young team, but they were also they also had some veterans on there too. You know, those veterans are aging out. You know, you can't keep relying on them. You have to start developing younger players, and I think that that is something that U.S. women's soccer has got to take a look at. Is um is building those younger players to help out with the, the aging veterans. I think when you look at the world catching up, I mean, you look at a country like Colombia, you know, mm-hmm. Colombia. I mean, like they shocked Germany. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know, look at how happy they were. You know what I mean? Look at how happy they were. England's still playing right now. Spain is too. Spain aren't is still playing right now. Japan, Japan is still playing right now. I mm-hmm. mean, you look at, the world is caught up to the U.S. It wouldn't surprise me. Maybe in the next, maybe a couple months, when FIFA I think does their rankings, you know, whoever wins this World Cup could be ranked. You know what I mean? Who knows if Sweden wins the World Cup? I mean, who knows? Could Sweden jump the United States? Can they jump Germany? I think they got a great shot to do that. I mean, like, but when you look at a, a country like um a, or Japan, Japan's been playing really well. I mean, like, or, mm-hmm. or Spain. I mean, like, you look There's at Spain. More parity. There's so much more parity now, you know, than and it's healthy been. healthy for women's and soccer. And it's healthy for women's soccer. Because, you know, you look at now, you know, everybody says, okay, the United States like this, you know, conglomerate, you know what I mean? Falling off. But they've kind of like a little bit fallen off a little bit because, but now the whole world has caught up to the United States. That's how I'm looking at it. So, yeah, pretty much. I would say that there's a lot more parity. I, I wouldn't say as much as the United States has fallen off, but I do think that I do think that some changes need to be made. I do agree. There's definitely some changes that do need to be made. Um, I am very curious to see how um, everything goes in Paris, and then I'm also curious to see when the men's side, you know, because the United States is hosting that along with with Canada and Mexico, so that'll be very interesting to see. In a few years, that'll be interesting, especially when you look at the men's um, World Cup coming up. I mean, that'll be really mm-hmm. interesting. I think so too. Um, but when I look at, but we're talking the women's side, right? And you know, I I've seen all the I've seen all the bottom line is, I think they need to change coaches. They need to change schemes, and they just got to put the ball in the net because. Here's what it is. You got to produce results. You're in a produce results league. You're in a produce results league. I always say this in high school football. I always say this in high school football. You're in a produce results league. You have to produce results. Sports and in all sports, you know. You look at the United States. They didn't produce results. You know, Alex Morgan didn't even score. She didn't score a goal in this tournament. She didn't score. I mean, you got to look at this team's makeup. You got to look at this team's. You know, there's a lot of question marks with the United States going forward because now you're in a kind of like they're in a crossroads. And I think that's a good way to describe this. All right. So that will do it for this episode of Between Terraminas on podcast with the the History Now host with the last three brain cells set up. Um, all right, guys, that'll do it. All right. You guys take care. Have a great night. See you soon.